TC3, my name is Avery, and here's what's happening in this week's TC3 News. Following us on social media is one of the best ways to stay connected to everything that's going on here. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram by searching TC3 Church to stay up to date and connected. You can also find us on YouTube. Our channel is youtube.com slash TC3 Church. There you will find all of our services on demand, as well as videos from our TC3 kids, TC3 students, and TC3 live worship ministries. Subscribe to these channels today. Did you know that you can follow along with our Sunday message on the YouVersion Bible app? Head to tc3.church slash message. Or if you already have the YouVersion app, you can find us in the app by tapping more, then events, and then search for TC3 Church. YouVersion exists to help you read, hear, and explore the Word of God. So download the app today. If you're new to TC3, welcome. We're so excited you're here. Please fill out a connect card so we can learn more about you. If you're interested in getting plugged into our church family, Starting Point is the perfect next step. In this four-week class, you will learn all about our church, our beliefs, and the missions we support. You'll also learn about your spiritual gifts and have the opportunity to connect with community. It starts July 10th during our 1030 service, so don't miss out on signing up. You can register online at tc3.church slash starting point. Hey guys, it's not too late. It's not too late for you to get involved in this year's missions trip to Denver. We are partnering with Denver Dream Center, and it's going to be an exciting opportunity for you to be able to impact the lives of some of the most needy neighborhoods in Denver. Don't be left out of this amazing experience. Go to tc3.church slash Denver and register today. Hey guys, have you heard of the Family Summer Challenge? This is an opportunity for children, teenagers, parents, adults of all ages to come together as a family to create something amazing. And as you can see from the videos here, that this is a chance for children to get off of the phones and screen times and for parents to come together, make some family memories and even get engaged in some really cool learning. Entries are due July 31st. Now we have some really cool prizes for the top entries. All the information and rules that you need to follow we're going to be found at tc3.church slash FSC. We can't wait to see what y'all come up with. Here at TC3, we're all about connecting people to the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. And we hope that in today's experience, you connect with Jesus in a real way. Well, hey, TC3, we are so excited you all are here with us. Happy Father's Day. Would you all stand as we worship our God today?
before you sit down, go ahead and fist pound the dad next to you and tell him happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of our dads watching online and out on the lawn. Dad, happy Father's Day to you. We love you so very much. Hey, everybody, we're so glad that you guys are with us this morning. My name is Miles. I get to serve our students, our teenagers here at TC3. And we just want to say welcome to our TC3 church family gathering. We're so grateful that you guys are in the building with us and that you're online and that you're on the lawn as well. Hey, if you are a first time guest, we're going to ask you to do something a little bit uncomfortable. Just go ahead and slip up your hand really quickly. We have some section leaders that are going to walk around and hand you a connection card, uh, please do us a favor, fill out that card uh, as you go throughout service today, and we want to be able to connect with you after service. We want to connect with you throughout the week. Uh, we want to get you involved in the life of this church, and more importantly, our mission is to connect you to the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. And so as you leave today, uh, at the information desk, there are two giving buckets on either side. You can drop that connection card in, and someone will be in contact with you tomorrow. Now, if you, are, uh, if you are new to our TC3 Church family, or if you are still learning about the life of our church, or trying to get plugged in from a life group's perspective, or a serve team's perspective, we want to encourage you to go through what we call starting point. Starting point happens uh, every now and again, and, uh, and usually it's about three to four weeks, and what it is, is it connects you uh, to the life of our church, uh, but also it tells you all about who we are, how we learn, and how we, how we abide by the God of the Bible, and, and that is who we sing to, that is who we worship, and so we want to encourage you uh, to check out our Starting Point Growth Track class. Uh, it starts on July 10th during this service, so you can come to the 9 a.m., and then you can head next door uh, for the second one. For more information about that class, you can head to the information desk as well. Now, VBS starts tomorrow. Is anybody excited about VBS? Yeah. We love VBS around here. We love seeing kids fill this place and fill that place and run all over this campus and just learn about Jesus and learn about who he is and how he can impact their life. And so we wanna ask you, as kids come into this place, VBS filled up really, really quickly. And so we wanna, we wanna ask you to be praying for them uh, as they come into this place, that their lives would be impacted by Jesus, that their hearts would be soften and that you would give wisdom to our team and to our servant leaders that are going to be in this place with them all throughout the week. Now things like like VBS and missions trip and camps and all those things happen because of you and they happen because of your giving and so we're going to use this time right now uh, to continue in worship but just through our through our giving. We believe the Lord calls us to be obedient in that and so it's really easy to give today. You can text the number 77977 with the words TC3 and whatever amount you feel led to give. You can scan that QR code that's on the side screens, or you can give in a traditional way by putting an envelope in the giving bucket as you exit today. Would you pray with me real quick? Lord, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for the fact that we get to come into this place and we get to worship you. Lord, thank you for fathers and thank you for the impact that they are able to have in and through our lives and more importantly thank you for being our heavenly father thank you god that that when all else seems to not go our way that you god are constant your shadow doesn't shift god you are the same every single day and we can trust you and we can lean on our heavenly father and so god i pray that we would do that in the moments to come that we would lean on you, that we would lean into you, and that your Holy Spirit, oh God, would soften our hearts. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd love to invite you guys to stand as we continue in worship. Come on. So in your name, 
Come and turn the tide. That's right. I'm staring at this mountain. No chance I'm getting through. But I've heard they can melt before you. So may your name. I'm asking it to move. Let that break miracle power pour out. I need a break a miracle moment right now. Only when my victory is found, bring that break. The fires around are raging I feel the heat at every turn But I heard you are in it with me So now by faith I'm standing on your word
believe it's yours. You believe it's yours. And I trust in you to lie my way And I shout your name in victory And I shout your name in victory The cross remains Hallelujah Every season It never
fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my And this is how 
may be seated. Man, there we go. Like, rookie mistake both services. I thought I had to fix this one. Well, good morning, TC3. If I have not met you, I am Brian Cedarwall, and I am the pastor and director of the Denver Dream Center, and uh, get to be here with you occasionally throughout the last couple of years, and uh, what an honor it is. Happy Father's Day. Where's all the fathers at? Amen. I've got my beautiful wife and my three boys are here somewhere. I've got a freshly graduated senior, a 10th grader, and a 7th grader. Anybody raising boys? Man, there's just something unique about raising boys, right? It's like herding cats and um, a lot of testosterone and everything's a challenge, everything's a competition from eating cereal to playing basketball. Whoever wins, wins. And so, what a fun time it is to be here with you, Pastor Gordon and Carol. Um, Can we just honor your pastors real quick? Celebrating 30 years as TC3 and 20 years that they've been here pastoring. I'm telling you, I get to travel and speak a lot, and this is one of my favorite churches to come and be at. You have amazing staff and leaders from the worship to Pastor Miles bringing the team up. Anybody coming to Denver on the mission trip? A few of you in here? Amen. Um, Excited that you are coming. It is phenomenal what God is doing in Denver. If you're not familiar with us, you can check us out online at denverdreamcenter.org, but short version of a very long story. My wife and I pastored in L.A. for eight years and um, started a, a ministry out there where we built a basketball facility, started running programs for gang members, and just like God working in incredible ways through our church, and then felt a call to leave California and move to Denver. So we've been there just over 15 years now. And a lot of it was just digging trenches and building bridges and trying to recognize what were the needs in the city, what were the gaps that were going unfilled, and how could we be what we call ourselves hope dealers in the middle of a city that's exploded with issues and concerns. And so we run programs working directly with the Department of Corrections. We're inside the, the penitentiaries and prisons and do reentry and pre-release planning. We've got 40 guys in an apartment complex all on parole, 18 women in a women's house, and we serve um, that population, former gang members, addicts, do recovery, all the way down to what we call adopt block We go into the neighborhoods in Denver that are most underserved and overlooked, and we're there every Saturday building relationships so that we can bring long-term stability, and then we get to know the kids and the families, and uh, we run youth programs, and we got our sports camps coming up. And so it's a blast, and it's crazy. And I'd love to tell the story that as we were getting um, just traction in our city, trying to be right in the middle. So if you've ever been to Denver, um, any any Colorado people in the house, a few of you? Can we just give a shout out to the Avalanche for a seven to zero? Oh, that's right. There we go. We have a few hockey fans. I'm sorry. I mean, I know Tampa. You guys have won it twice. You don't need to win it this year. It's been a while for the Avs. So um, great, great sports city. We're just a few blocks away from Coors Field. Our building's right downtown. So we're in the middle of homeless camps and million-dollar high-rises, restaurants, Rockies, Broncos, and crazy. Um, And when the pandemic hit, we were trying to figure out what does that look like and what does that mean like everybody, right? Church is closed. We got used to this online. But for us being in the middle of the city, the needs began to explode. So three weeks into it, we're trying to figure out what to do. We're getting phone calls from families and kids, and and we on average mobilize around 12,000 volunteers a year. Uh, We started literally with just my wife and three kids, and now we serve around 50,000 people a year in the city of Denver. It's crazy. Um, yeah, and it's, and it's not because our staff and our budget's so big, it's because we're just a little bit crazy for Jesus in the city of Denver. And what we saw happen when COVID hit, we waited about three weeks trying to figure out what was going on, and we started getting phone calls. And so we work really close with our city, our police department, uh, our public works, our you know, city officials, and, and again, we try to be that, that faith component that if they're making decisions on behalf of the city, I want to be a part of that. And I want to mobilize the church to be engaged. And so Easter weekend in 2020, we built what we called Hope Boxes. And uh, you know, not that long ago, we were all panic buying water and toilet paper. Everybody still got some in your garage, right? Like, I don't even know why I'm buying it, because my water still runs, and I got it, but if you're buying it, I'm going to buy it. And so, people were, were buying into fear, and fear was dictating a lot of our decisions, and what do we do, and what is this going to look like? 
And so we built hope boxes, water, toilet paper, basic resources, and we just started knocking on doors. We went around our city, and again, we worked within the context of our emergency operations department and, and just have favor with them. But we, Easter weekend, um, took care of 1,200 families. And as we're knocking on doors, what I began to recognize is people come to the door, right? And this, this is the earliest days. So we didn't have the cool masks and all that stuff. Literally, all of our gang members were put on bandanas, so it looked like we were robbing the neighborhoods. But we're knocking on doors, stepping back, right? And people will come to the door, and they would just start to cry. Because they didn't know what was going on, and it was fear. They would be like, Pastor B, like, we, we didn't know if anybody even cared, and no one's been to check on us. So we committed to going out every week, and that became a thousand meals and into the neighborhoods. And crazy story, we got a call from Borden Farms out of Texas, and they asked if we would help get milk out, because during the pandemic, farmers were still producing crops and meat and milk. And so we worked at the city, and, and of course, I'm the guy that I always say yes. Uh, any, any planners? How many of you like to plan? Man, I would drive you crazy. Um, my plan is say yes and then figure it out. And so we said yes and brought it back to the team. And they're like, how much milk? And so I made a phone call. It was 4,000 gallons of milk every Friday. That's a lot of milk. So now we're trying to figure out how do we store this? Where do we keep it? We got to have refrigeration. And so God's grace, I call Cronky Sports. They're a big partner with us. And um, uh, at that point, the Nuggets were playing in Orlando in the bubble, and the Avs were up in Canada. And so now we're trying to figure out, and so they let us use the Pepsi Center, and uh, that became our home base. How cool is that? So we're now giving out milk on Fridays, and then we got connected to the CARES Act, which was semi-truck loads of food. So again, I say yes, and we ask, how much food is that? And it was five semi-trucks, which is 200,000 pounds of food every Friday. So now we're mobilizing people. We go to the parking lot. We begin setting up these drive through food lines. Within three weeks, we're having over 800 cars line up. People lining up for hours just to come get a 20-pound box of produce and food and milk. But we turned it into what we called our Friday morning church. Literally, we've got signs. How can we pray for you, right? There's a smile underneath this mask. Whatever, whatever the signs needed to say, but here's what we started seeing. In the midst of craziness exploding in our country, right, people at odds and defund the police, whatever sides they're trying to force you to pick, we're bringing our police chief and commanders and officers together with former gang members and inmates, and we're serving food together. We have an area where people can literally pull their car over and get prayer. We'd have them get out of their car. We have pictures of gang members huge tatted guys next to police officers in uniform praying for people to find hope in Christ. And what I can tell you, amen, and what I can tell you is when oftentimes we get discouraged and we wonder, like, is anything working? It is. And God is still moving. And what you see on the news isn't always a reflection of what's happening on the streets. And so we said yes to doing that. We thought it'd be for a few weeks, maybe a couple of months. Um, we ran from June of 2020 all the way to June of 2021. So for a full year, we were in the parking lot. Every Friday, our team would get there at 5.30 in the morning before the sun was up, right? And this is Colorado, so the summer, it was hot and people are sweating. By the time December, January got there, now we're shoveling snow and we're still handing out food. We got out 3.8 million pounds of food to our city. We became the largest food distribution center in the city of Denver, and we're, we're, not even a we're not a food, we're not a food bank. But there's sort of a see need, meet a need type of a moment. And we saw God just begin to move. And so as uh, you pray for us, we're in the middle of fighting the battles right now with addiction. We had a guy uh, commit suicide just a couple weeks ago. We had three guys relapse last week and end up in the hospital. Drug addictions are uh, incredibly strong right now. Our homeless population has exploded. Fentanyl is hitting the streets like crazy, and we're in the middle of that fight. But I'm telling you, there are people that are finding hope in Christ, that God is moving, that He is redeeming stories. And so as you pray for us, if you've got someone connected to you, or you came in today and you're wondering, is hope real? I'm telling you that it is. And so. It's an honor to be here, excited to share more. I'll be here after service to talk to you. Those that are coming up to Denver, we're going to have some fun. Um, we'll go to a Rockies game. We'll hit the streets and do everything in between. If you got your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 15, or you can follow along on the screen. But I love this story, especially being Father's Day. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus is talking, and he says, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got a, 
together all he had, set off to a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father's house and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up, and he went to his father. But while he was a long way off, his father saw him, filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and his sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. Let's pray. Father. In the next few minutes, I pray that your word would just speak to us, God, that we would be encouraged this morning, that we would recognize that, God, you are a loving Father, and your grace and your forgiveness is so powerful and so real. So, God, speak to us. God, let your word penetrate, change us, make us more like you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen. I love this story, right, because ultimately, if you're a note-taker, you can write this down. In life, there are always decisions. Right? Nothing new, but you can say it this way, that your life, where you're at financially, in your relationships as a parent, a husband, a wife, as a boss, as a student, your life is the sum total of the decisions you make. Right? Decisions are significant, but we're always making decisions. Paul says it this way. In Ephesians chapter 5, he says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. He said, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The challenge that Paul gives us when he says, be careful how you live, the opposite of being careful is what? Care less. And, and careless has sort of two different meanings. There's, there's some of you trying to get to church this morning like me. We got in last night. My youngest son had a basketball tournament in Utah, so we were there for the last three days. We hopped a flight. And um, anybody cat fans? Just let me pray for you real quick. Um, on our flight, we almost missed getting here on time because someone brought their cat and their cat had an accident on our flight. I've never had a flight delayed because a cat on board had an accident. But literally, we sat on the tarmac for almost an hour taking care of the cat accident. So for those of you that we're praying for that are cat fans, almost missed it. But those of you that were driving like carelessly to church, right, we, you can be reckless or you can care less. You just stop caring. So Paul says, be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Every decision we make is significant. Every choice. And here we have this young man that Jesus begins to tell the story, right? There's a father that's a farmer. He's got two sons. Any, any Midwesterners, any, anybody who grew up around the farm a little bit, right? I grew up in Illinois, and farm life was not an easy life. I wasn't a farmer. But a lot of my friends were. They were up before school doing chores and then after school and in a very taxing life. So you can only imagine this younger son is that guy that like wakes up one day and he's like, man, I am tired of milking cattle. I am tired of doing chores. And and he's on his social media, right? He's he's seeing what other people are doing and the lives that they're living. Something is inspiring him, right? It's the the foam of the fear missing out. Like, there's got to be more than chores and hard work, and I'm just tired of this. And so, he makes a choice. Goes to his father, says, I just, I want my inheritance. Let me have what's mine. I'm sure against his better judgment, the father says, here you go. He takes his portion. And the Bible says he travels to a distant country, right? He leaves what was known. He leaves his family. He leaves that moment. And he says, I'm going I'm to figure out life on my own. And I mean, could you imagine being 18 all over again? And all of a sudden, you got this massive sum of money, your inheritance. You're like, man, I'm going to go to California. I'm going to hit LA, and I'm going to experience life. You could have a lot of fun in California with a large sum of money. But when the money ran out, the party stopped. The friends weren't coming around, and the Bible says that he found himself alone and desperate. See, life is the sum total of the decisions we make, and and if we make those good decisions, Paul says making the most of every opportunity, it's this idea of the ROI, what's the return uh, on my deposit? And if I'm making good decisions, right, wouldn't it be phenomenal 
um, if you came out of Thanksgiving and Christmas from splurging and decided, you know, every year, how many decide you're going to get healthy and you're going to eat better or exercise, wouldn't it be great if you could just drop on the ground and start doing crunches and all of a sudden an ab just pops out? You're like, yeah, right? But man, you can do crunches for like days and weeks and months, and then you hit Krispy Kreme once and you're screwed, right? It's just crazy how that works because you don't see the initial return on, on those decisions. And so we're, we're pulled so many different directions, and, and there's always decisions. So here this young man is. Not only are there always decisions, but there's always results. Every choice when we make it has an outcome. Now, some of you that know Pastor Gordon well know that um, he can be a good influence, and sometimes, well, you know. And so, when I was in college, I actually did my internship. So, I was 20 years old. Pastor Gordon was a youth pastor in Memphis, Tennessee, and I came and spent the summer with him. And um, one night, every time we would leave the church, there was a, 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 an incredibly nice golf course by the church. Um, and it had this fence and even a barbed wire fence around it to keep people out. And there was a water hole, a par three, right? And every day we're driving by, we're seeing people hit, right? And losing what we know are nice golf balls in that water hole. And so, uh, Pastor Gordon comes up with a good plan that we should climb the fence and hit that water hole and, and collect some golf balls, right? So, I'm the interns. So I'm like, you know what? That's a great, great idea. And so, it's like late one night, I call him like, hey, I'm on the way, let's go. And so, it's like midnight, I'm driving to the golf course, I got like the, the plastic grocery bags, right, that I'm going to stash my golf balls in. And Pastor Gordon, being the great friend and leader, he's like, hey man, uh, I can't make it. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm already in, so I'm doing this thing. And so, I get there, climb the fence, I'm trying to get over this barbed wire, getting all cut up. I get to the water hole. And this is sort of those stories, like, don't, don't ever do this. I'm telling you so that you don't do what I did, okay? And so I get there, and, and I get into the water hole, and as soon as my feet hit down, it's like, oh, golf ball heaven, right? There's just golf balls everywhere. So I'm like, yes. So I'm collecting golf balls. I'm putting in the bags. I'm sitting them up on the side. About an hour into it, I've got multiple bags filled with golf balls. And all of a sudden, I, I hear this dog barking, and then coming down, and this German Shepherd, very large dog, and here I am in the water, and I've got like just my head above the water. I'm like, it's like now one o'clock in the morning. There's this German Shepherd. Like, I, what am I? Gonna, I'm like, I'm a, now I'm thinking I'm gonna be stuck in this water till like the sun comes up and someone comes to rescue me. But what I notice is the dog doesn't see me. It sees those bags, and so it's like come up to the bags and it starts to grab one of my golf bags. And so I'm like now I'm panicking, thinking those are my golf balls. And so well they're not really, but they are because they're my bag. And, and so I, I jump in the water, it scares the dog, and I'm a horse racer. I'm like, I got to get out of here, right? Like, that was too close, and that dog comes back. So now I get my golf balls. I'm getting ready to start leaving, and here's a golf cart coming down. And it's got the little yellow light, like security is now, it's like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And now I'm panicking, right? Like I'm an intern at a church, I'm about to get arrested for sneaking on a golf course. Gordon, you left me hanging, it was your idea. Like how do I even blame Pastor Gordon because he's not even here? And so I'm in this moment, and, and all I can think of is like, get back in the water. So I grab the golf balls, I jump in the water, and I like submerge myself, right? Total movie moment. And now my heart's racing, and I'm like, open my eyes in this murky water, and I see like the spotlight flashing across the water, like I'm going to jail. Like, I, I'm just, I just want to serve Jesus, but I'm going to jail because Gordon told me to go get golf balls. And, and thankfully, how am I like, I can't hold my breath any longer, and as I come to the top, the golf cart's driving away, my heart's racing. Literally grab the golf balls that I got. I don't care about the barbed wire fence. I'm jumping over, get out of there with my golf balls intact. So, um, the moral of the story is don't listen to Pastor Gordon if he's trying to get you to do something dumb, because every decision, right, has a result. Thankfully, I made it away from that one unscathed besides a few cups and scrapes. But this young man ends up in a foreign country. He spends everything. And now he finds himself alone and desperate to the point where he can't, he can't find a job. There's no work to be had. And then the Bible says, what's the job he gets? He finds a, a, a farmer. How ironic is that? And this is a pig farmer, which, of course, customary in this day, Jesus talking um, about a Jewish boy that should never been in a place where they didn't eat pig. So to now be serving, it doesn't get any lower than that. But he's so desperate that the Bible says he longs to fill himself with even the food that he's feeding the pigs. There's always decisions. There's always results. 
But here's what's amazing about today being Father's Day. There's always a way home. No matter where you've drifted or gone, or maybe it's a son or a daughter or a friend that you're praying for, there's decisions and there's results, but there's always a way home. And what I love about what I get to do is working with men and women coming out of prison and out of gangs, their stories are insane. I got a video that I want you to watch that just two of my favorite guys, Danny and Lonnie. Danny did 25 years straight in prison. Lonnie just finished 18 years straight in prison. And this is a little bit of their story. My name is Lonnie Grego. My name is Daniel Diaz. And I'm the director of the internship program here at the Denver Dream Center. And I just did 25 years in the uh, Colorado Correction Facility. At the Dream Center, I do re-entry. I am a case manager uh, for wages, and I help men and women inside prison transform to outside, and then I help them out here. My relationship with my father growing up was broken and full of abandonment. My father was a heroin addict. Um, him and my mother were in and out of the streets and in and out of prison growing up. And so that left me um, fatherless majority of the time. The lack of my father really is presence because my dad was there, but he was super abusive. Um, he was su super uh, negative and always put me down. So the impact that had on me was that I always felt not good enough. I always felt stupid. I always felt like I was not worthy to do anything right. I could never do anything right. I was just thought I was bad all the time. So what that did was it impacted me to just continue to do bad. Um, every time I tried to do good and do good, I, I always got the opposite. So I just became bad and just lived up to what he wanted. It helped me develop a feeling of unlovable, defective, what's wrong with me, why am I not good enough, that you would choose that life over your own son. What changed, even when I started first reading the Bible and learning about God, the word father scared me. I was raised in hellfire and brimstone. So if I cussed, I thought I was going to hell. If I did anything, I thought I was going to hell. So every time I would hear father in the Bible or I would you know, look up and I'd do something wrong, I was afraid of God. God had to literally teach me that he was not my father, but a loving father, grace and mercy and love, and forgiveness. And once he did that and started to teach me that, wow, that's when I learned how to start loving people for real and just walking, just according to like Jesus walked every day. I understand grace and mercy. And within me, that helped me to understand what a true father really is. My relationship with God now is, is loving. I know that today it's okay to make mistakes. I know that I'm going to be forgiven. I know that he has grace and that his arms are wide open at all times that I can run back to him and he'll be waiting for me. I don't have to run away from my problems. I don't have to hide like I was from my other father. God is the loving father that I've always needed and always want in my life and I have him today. Open arms, full forgiveness and full grace. And here's what I love about you catching a glimpse of those stories. Danny did 25 years. Lonnie did 18 years. From their criminal past to their violence to the gangs to the drug addictions, everything that God has brought them through. There's always decisions. There's always results, but there's always a way home. See, in this story, being Father's Day, here's what you and I get to recognize. Luke is the author of that. And most consider Luke to have been a, a Gentile, where you've got Matthew and Mark and John, who as Jews wrote to a Jewish culture and had their own understanding. But if you look at Luke's life, he was sort of outside of that inner circle. And so a lot of Luke's writing through his gospel is talking about prostitutes and tax collectors and sinners and, and people that were outside the circle. 
And so when he illustrates through Luke 15, he talks about in the first part of the chapter that, that the shepherd would leave the 99 sheep to go rescue the one, that the widow would do everything she could do to keep the nine coins secure, but to find the one that she had lost. And then he makes it very personal and practical to the story of a prodigal son who would make a story and, and make decisions that would lead him to a distant country. But here's, here's how I picture it. I just I picture this old farmhouse and a dad that every day when the chores were done would wrap up his evening and get his coffee and go sit on that, on that porch. And he would look down that road that his son had taken off on. And he would think to himself, maybe today's the day. Maybe tonight's the night that my son comes home. And for days, weeks, months, maybe even years, he would sit and he would look. And the son one day in verse 17 says that he came to his senses. He recognizes like, man, I've screwed up. I have drifted. I don't even know how I got here. Everybody ever been there before? I don't even know where it started, but I don't even know how I got here and what do I do next? And he comes to his senses and he recognizes, at least in my father's house, the servants even have a bed and they have food. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to take the journey home. And I'm sure he's walking down the dusty road, he's kicking rocks, he's thinking, God, I'm screwed up. Man, how did I get here? How am I going to look at my dad? How am I going to face my family? And is there any hope? But here's what I love every night the father looking down that dusty road. And one night as he sits down and he looks, he sees the silhouette of someone walking back toward him. And I'm sure he stands up and he's like, could it be? Right, because Jesus says in this story that while he was still at a distance, what, the father sees him, which means he had to be looking. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God loves me. That when I drift and when I get stupid, when I make bad decisions, that God is still there and he's watching and he's waiting. And when you and I make one decision, we take the first step. I love this saying that says, you may feel like you're a million steps from God. He'll take every step except for one. And when you turn and take that step, what does it say? It says the father recognizes and he runs. And he grabs his son, and he doesn't say, I told you so, I knew you'd be back. He grabs him with the biggest hug, and he says, my son who was dead is now alive. Who was, who was lost is now found, and they begin to celebrate. See, there's always decisions, there's always results, but there's always a way home. Do this with me if you would. If you just close your eyes for a second, let me pray for you this morning. It is, again, such an honor to be at TC3. I love your pastors. I love this church. But most of you, I don't know what you came in with today, who brought you here, and what you're walking through. But no matter the choices you've made, where you're at in life, know that there's a God that just radically loves you. Hope is real. Danny and Lonnie found it. I'm telling you, there's nothing that you've done, walked through, or that you're walking through that God cannot bring you out of. Maybe it's a son or a daughter that you're praying for. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your finances. Listen, there is a God that believes in you, that loves you, that is watching and waiting for you. As we get ready to wrap up this morning, the greatest decision you'll ever make is simply to turn and take that first step. Say, God, I don't know how I drifted or how I got to where I got, but I want to come back to you. And he runs and he is ready to forgive you and to bring you in and tell you that you are loved, that you are valuable, that you are significant, that you are important because God loved us so much that he would send his son and that Jesus died for you. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor B, I've drifted. I've been in place. I don't even know how I got there. But today on Father's Day, I want to make that step, and I want to return, and I want to hear him say, I forgive you, and I love you, and that you're welcome, and I want to celebrate. Listen, the Bible says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, God has raised him from the dead. Romans 5, 8 says, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. All you have to do is make that first step, and he will meet you there. If you're here today, you say, I want to make that step. Pastor, B, I want you to pray for me. Just shoot your hand up real quick. Let me pray for you. A bunch of you. Man, a whole bunch. Amen, amen. Let me pray for us this morning. Father, so many hands, first service and second service, recognizing that, God, all we have to do is take that step, and you run and you meet us. You bring forgiveness. 
God, you bring fullness back to our life. And so we thank you for that. God, I pray for each one, God, from the first service to the second service, to those that are watching online, that you would help us to walk in your forgiveness, to understand on Father's Day a father's love for his children. God, we thank you for that. I pray a blessing over this church, that you would continue to use them. God, anoint them to not only reach Stewart, God, but South Florida, God, this country and around the world. So we thank you on Father's Day for your gift, for your love, and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you guys to stand and worship with us. Come on. to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve it you take the Praise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. Undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. And so let this driving cease. And this is my victory. Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all when I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me You are my champion The giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you won I am who you say I Amen. You believe that this morning, church? Undefeated, seated in a heavenly place with Jesus. You believe that? Hey, listen, there's going to be people underneath each one of these screens that would love to pray for you this morning. Please take advantage of that. Guys, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We say it each week and we meant it. The mission field begins as soon as you guys hit those doors. God bless. We'll see you next week.